check it out here guys I've got this project to do some uh, three by three square tubing with 11 gauge wall and these need to be these are 24 foot long sticks that you see I'm working with here and these need to be uh, cut into eight foot sections so you know by default you get three eight foot sections out of one piece and these you know were about a quarter inch longer so they allow just the perfect amount for uh, the kerf of the blade and all that. I wanted to use the rotary tube cutter that you see in the background back there to cut all these holes, um, but you need a sacrificial, about 10 inches of the tube uh, as a sacrificial piece, you know, with the work holding. So it, I mean, you'd end up wasting almost a, well, you'd end up wasting a third of every tube by trying to cut it in that. So I had no choice really given this project, but to, do it this way which is to you know make a jigs which is what is cutting out what we're doing here <clears throat> all right you saw those jigs i cut out there and uh, the main point I wanted to do was be able to clear all the slats so that I don't have to remove all the slats, just remove a couple here and there. And, um, but also still have clearance because uh, you know we're gonna be pretty close here on having enough uh, total clearance. And then uh, you saw, well, I don't know if you, I didn't actually show this on video, but um, you see these jack screws right here and these factory stops. I'm just leaving those in place and it doesn't even really matter where those are. Um, and you see the uh, threaded rod that we can easily, you know, get to without, you know, having to reach under the, uh, the tube there and adjust it. So we're going to do a couple of them, uh, put a dial indicator on the gantry and sweep it in with a dial indicator and see how it is. And then we'll use those jack screws to position it around, make sure we got it running true within, you know, a few thousands, I'm thinking like maybe five or ten thousandths would be a reasonable number because these tubes are not going to be any more accurate than that. So um, if I can average it out, you know, get it get it within five or so from end to end, um, should be pretty good on it. All right, this machine's got a couple of factory adjustable stops on it here. And uh, I drilled and tapped some holes in the end of it so I could put this angle iron in and extend it out. So we'll just use this to set our zero and get this locked down. It should be pretty rigid that we can butt this into it, you know, without flexing it when we change the tubes out. Hopefully, we'll keep an eye on it and see. The back end of this is going to need to go that way, so I'm just turning the adjustment here and get this out here where you can see it. I don't know if you can see that moving or not, but we're getting some pretty fine adjustment on it. So we'll get it dialed in and uh, cut some holes. This just takes a couple minutes to get this right. Um, you see, we got the indicator zeroed out and. Uh, 
So if we jog this thing down, you'll notice it uh, starts moving forward, meaning that the tube is too far to the left. It's pushing in on the indicators we, as we traverse down. It's pretty consistent, although it seems to kind of ramp up and ramp down a little bit. So we're right at about a hundred thousand, so a little bit under an eighth of an inch off. So what I'm going to do is the tube needs to go that way. So I'm going to screw this screw in here to get it to push out here. And I'm going to take about half the distance. So we're back. I might have took a little too much there. But um, you see what we're doing? We're going to work that until we get that pretty close to zero, zero, as close as we can, and then we'll cut the holes in it. All right, I thought I'd show you this. If you see the laser indicator there, it's right on the very corner, wrapped around the radius down on the flat part of the tube, and it looks like we can come this way just a tiny bit, and then we'll have it at the, you know, the correct datum for the reference point there to cut the holes in the center. All right, I went ahead and took that front cover off so we could see what was going on. It's kind of retracted up in there too far without it, with it on there. So I think we're all set. We're going to give it a go. So all four sides of each tube gets holes in it and the holes need to be perfectly, well, as close to as possible opposing each other because these, this is weightlifting equipment and the shaft they're going to use is going to go all the way through. Now it is a big, you know, a pretty fairly large clearance hole, so it doesn't need to be like perfect, but, uh, but there's a lot of holes. Oh, did you hear that? It's not only dropping through uh, the dropout, but it's also dropping through the opposing hole. So I think we got a pretty accurate setup here. All the way through the collection bin. All right, they are all finished up. Pretty happy with how that worked out. Turned out the holes look good. And they pass the eyeball test. Now those are just clearance holes for half. They're like 11 sixteenths holes and they're clearance for 5 eighths uh, shaft. So there's plenty of room for error. I mean, I probably didn't have to cut these as, you know, and fuss around with the indicator as much as I did. But uh, you never know. Some other project may need that. And it's good to kind of validate that. But hopefully soon uh, you'll see some tubes getting cut on that. See you guys.